video, I'll introduce limits. I'll start with limits of a sequence, then the limit of a function at a point. I'll investigate a particular example and discuss a little bit of notation, and I will also illustrate these concepts with some code. Uh, this code will produce some graphical sorts of stuff, and you don't really need to bother and worry with the details of the code, just see the output that I produce. Uh, this code will actually tell you how SymPy can calculate limits for you. So, to get started. Uh, what is the limit of a sequence? Well, that's the relatively easy version. Most college classes start with the limit of a function at a point, but I find that a little bit complicated. Uh, so a nice warm-up that is relevant to, to understanding that is just to talk about the limit of a sequence. The Take this sequence, for instance, 1, 1.9, 1.99, and so on. Clearly, this gets close to 2. In fact, we say it gets close to 2 from the left. Uh, that distinction will matter in a minute. But uh, we could also approach it from the right and uh, take a sequence like 2.1, 2.01, and so on. So as a bit of notation, we may write that the limit of the sequence is 2, or we may write that the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence is 2 because the index is going to infinity. This has index 1, right? That's a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub n is any arbitrary element. It's going off to infinity. So uh, next we want to talk about the limit of a function at a point. Well, let's uh, intuitively, this is what the y value gets close to as the x value approaches some number. So what does that mean? Well, let's start again with a sequence of x values. Let's take the sequence of x values we used before, 1, 1 1.9, 1 1.99. Let's use the function x squared. If we plug these x values into the function, we get the resulting values, 1, 3.61, and so on which clearly get close to 4, and 4 is the limit of the function from the left. This is the notation we would use for that. As uh, Well, this is for a different example, but we would say the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of the function. Now, here I have a different example, and let's talk about this for a bit. Uh, this function is a piecewise defined function. It behaves like this on the left side of 0, namely for negative numbers. It behaves like this on the right side of 0. And we can plot this function. And here I have it. I have defined the left part of the function. I've defined the right part of the function. And I have told SymPy to plot the left part of the function only on this interval, negative 2 to 0 plot the right function on 0 to 2. We run that code and we get, we have to wait. So there it is. Uh, we run the code and we get this graph. And we can talk about what do you get if you plug in numbers that approach 0 from the left. So imagine that you plugged in point, negative 0 0.5, then you get about 1.5. Imagine that you plug in uh, say 0.1, you're getting clearly close to 1. And in fact, what I'm doing right now is called what I call the graphical method of finding limits is, you know, looking at uh, graphically what you uh, uh, get when you plug in uh, numbers close to a point and find the corresponding function values. So that's plugging in x values close to a number and seeing what you get on the y axis. I can illustrate this further by uh, actually showing you a list of x values that approaches uh, 0 from the left here. Let's start with just that part of the code. This will show you the numbers I'm plugging in. And so you can see this gets close to 0 from the left. Now if I uh, actually plug those into the function and plot the results, uh, you can see the y values are getting closer and closer to 1. And I need to change this window. So this is not exactly the plot I wanted to show you. This is the plot I wanted to show you. And so you can see 
I'm uh, it, and the axes got rescaled in a funky way so that uh, you know it's you know the the x axis is running through about 1.75 rather than zero as it usually does. So uh, don't worry too much about the axes, but just notice that yeah, in fact, as you plug in points where the x values get close to zero, the y value gets close to one. Now, if we reverse this, if we plug in uh, values that get uh, close to zero from the other side, from the right, then we would get this graph. And again, uh, you can see these little dots. Hopefully, you can see them. They're pretty small. But uh, they do get closer and closer to negative 2 as x approaches 0 from the right. So... Uh, that's a bit of uh, an introduction. I'll just reiterate that the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, we write this way with a little negative sign subscript above the 0. So we say that the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of the function is equal to 1. And in this case, the limit from the right was equal to 2. Now just a little bit about how you can use SymPy to calculate uh, limits. Let's take this function here. Uh, so in fact, let me just make sure that it's clear what function I'm talking about. I will pretty print it. And there it is. This is the function. So something de deliberately intentionally weird and complicated. And what I would like to do is show you how to get some limits. I say sp.limit of this function as x approaches 0. And I run that code, and it tells me that the answer is infinity. So we'll see why that is and what that means in a little bit in future videos. But that's the right answer. And um, down here, I can have x approach pi. I can have x approach pi over 2. and uh, I can even put in a limit with uh, square roots, and it gives me all of these answers. So this is how you can have SymPy calculate limits for you.